Hi, my name is Luke Diamond. I'm a music producer and audio engineer, and today I want to dive into the KC-1, a new tube opto compressor from Kive Audio. This style of compressor is incredibly popular along all genres of music, specifically pop and hip hop, famously for vocals, but it can be used on multiple sources, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's dial in some cool sounds. Let's get into it. So firstly, I recorded a piece of music specifically for this video. Um, we're going to mainly focus on vocals, but we will touch on other aspects as well. Let's just take a listen to start. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm high. I can feel you clouding up my brain. Thoughts spinning like a hurricane in my sky. All right. Um as you can hear, the vocal's kind of all over the place. Now I've loaded the KC1 plugin onto that vocal track. Uh, I have all the backgrounds muted. We're just focusing on the lead right now. And let's quickly go over all of the features before we really dial in the vocal. Firstly, this UI is probably super familiar to some people. And if not, don't worry, this compressor is actually really easy to use. And uh, famously, it's hard to mess up. Before we dive into the lower section, I wanna talk about the upper controls because there's some really cool features worth mentioning here. Firstly, you have your typical presets section. Uh, we won't be using that today. You have input and output compensation. You're gonna have oversampling. Um, you can do 2X, 4X, 8X, 16X. You have THD or total harmonic distortion. This is really cool. We're gonna go over this in a little bit. It's kind of like a saturation knob built into the plugin, which is really, really cool. Then you have your mix knob, which you know not typically something you get with a lot of hardware modules. So very, very cool. And then if you wanna work with like dual mono, you do have your left and right link. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be keeping mine on. And moving on to the main part of the plugin here, this is the meat of it, all right? We're gonna start with the gain knob. It's gonna be your makeup gain. Um, it's gonna be able to adjust the gain, whatever differences may have occurred during actual compression. I use the gain knob here to try and get like a transparent volume. So the volume coming out sounds the same as the volume before it hits the plugin, just so I don't trick my mind into thinking louder equals better. And then moving on, you have your ratio, which is pretty typical for most compressors. Uh, your attack and release, then you have your threshold. Now this meter section here is really cool because like I said, I like to have my output around the same level as it was before it hit the compressor. So this actually allows you to monitor your input. So this is the sound going into the plugin, gain reduction, how much gain reduction is happening. That's the pretty standard one. Um, and then also your output, which is really cool. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm gonna be using gain reduction. You have three attack and release modes here where you can have a fixed attack and release. You can have a fixed and manual combination. It's gonna be a fast attack and a variable release depending on the source really. And then you have full manual, which is what I'm gonna be using. And then you have a side chain filter knob here. And this is really cool because you can actually filter out frequencies that you don't want to trigger the compressor. Um, I honestly, for vocals, will ride that up to about 200 uh, just because I don't want to compress the super low stuff, but it really is source dependent. And then over to the far left, I saved these for last. You have your left, mid, and your right side selector. Your mono, stereo, or mid side selector is under that. All right, so the lead vocal we're working with is uncompressed. It kind of sounds like it has a blanket over it. It's got some dynamic to it. Let's see if we can smooth it out. I'm going to start with the threshold. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave. Thoughts spinning like a hurricane in my And then one thing I'm going to do is kind of adjust my attack and release. Um, I want to slow down the attack just a little bit more, maybe to about 12 o'clock. I can feel it in my fingers. Let some of the aggression come through. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm... Because if I dial the attack all the way back to fast, you can kind of hear that it cuts the transients off in the beginning. I can feel it in my fingertips. And here it opens up. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm high. That's probably where I'll have it there. If you have too slow of a release, it will kind of start to sound a little I bit can dead, feel in my it opinion. In my fingertips. I can so hear we'll my dial name this back. Leave your lips when I'm high. Uh, let's adjust the ratio. Two to one sounds pretty good. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm Four to one is really high. aggressive. I like it. And again, we did uh, do the sidechain filter I to about 200. Up my brain. Thoughts spinning like a hurricane in my sky. 
Now I'm going to try to input match. A uh, really cool way to do this is you can actually AB flip this. I'm pretty happy with that already. Let's listen to what I had before. So this is with it uh, deactivated. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm... The when I'm... I can hear it's like very shrill. Um, and focusing on kind of crunching that down. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm... It's much easier on the ears. And then the other stuff... has been brought back out. So I'm doing about 7 dB of compression there, maybe a little bit more on that loud part. You can really, really crank this and have it work really good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna up it a little bit more, see what happens. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm Not that much. And now circling back to the THD adjustment here, uh, total harmonic distortion is what that stands for. We mentioned it in the overview. It adds a really cool distortion effect. And honestly, I think it would sound really good on this vocal. So I'm going to crank it all the way up. I like to go too much with things and then dial it back. So let's listen. I can feel it in my fingertips. That sounds so cool. I can my name leave your lips when I'm. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm. Hi. That sounds really, really good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, adding total harmonic distortion added a lot to that vocal performance. And I think it's really cool because you can absolutely crank it for a really cool tonal effect, or you can just kind of tastefully add it for a little bit of vocal sheen. And I think it really did us well here. Now that we've compressed the lead vocal, I'm gonna go ahead and just dial in some quick settings for our background vocals. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm high. And then you know what? I'm actually gonna add it on the lead vocal bus as well. I can feel my fingertips I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm high. now let's use it on some different uh, sources here so one thing I really want is especially right there with the kick I want it to sound a lot less it's not really super dynamic but I want it to be kind of crushed I want it to be like kind of a tonal effect so I'm gonna put an instance on there I'm gonna slow down the attack let that transient come through, fast release. Already I like that. Ooh. It's got a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit snappier before. We weren't even doing a whole lot of compression to the kick, but it sounds really good going through it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the snare because I want it to have a little bit more oomph to it. I love the way the snare sounds now. Awesome. And now with the bass, I really want to bring out the attacky like picking to make it more aggressive. So for that, let's adjust our threshold. It's going to be a slow attack. Hear it? Picking's quieter. It's getting a little bit more prominent now with a slower attack. And then a fast release. In the mix. Before. After. Yeah. It's subtle, but it brought out the picking quite nicely. Now let's listen to all the elements at once. I can feel it in my fingertips. I can hear my name leave your lips when I'm high. I can feel you 
clouding up my brain Thoughts spinning like a hurricane in my sky I am super happy with the way that this plugin sounds. It sounds good, it's versatile, it's super easy to use. That kind of checks all the boxes for me. Thank you so much for joining me on my overview of the KC1 compressor from Kive Audio. Go to kiveaudio.com to get more information about this plugin. It's awesome. It's been my pleasure. I'm Luke again. Thank you guys for being here. See you around.